my little heater going in here in the room trying to stay warm the temperature dropped on me today Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been pretty rough out there, but man, this whole boxing climate is so many people moving around and jumping from positions. It's, it is all over the place. Like Jamel Herring, you know, he left the PBC, signed a yep. deal, signed a deal with top rank, and I knew he was leaving. You say he's going to where, 130? Yeah, he says uh, that he was easily making weight. He's actually going to go to 130 now. Wow. Because I know he's a, he's fighting at 35. I don't know. He's, he's, he's yeah. going to try it at 130? I know he said he had another announcement yeah. he was going to make. Yeah, but I think that's probably his deal. You know, top rank got him, promised him three fights a year, so he should be, uh, he should, he's like, I couldn't turn the deal down. You know, and uh, yeah, he's going to have a new trainer and everything, you know. Uh, he he left the team, you know, and, and he didn't really get the kind of support he thought he was going to get when he said he was leaving. You know, a lot of people were not happy. Over there with the the team, but he's like, oh, look, I gotta do what's best for me and my family, you know, and this is the best deal for yeah. me. So I understood that. Yeah, I mean, if they're willing, to, if they're willing to give you, you know, he's taking some losses, so now he's like a, you know, on that second level where he's not a high priority whatsoever. So why not go there and get three fights a year, you know, get a contract, you know? I, I like that, man. You look for him. Yeah, you're right. He's taking to uh, who he changed to? Was Crawford's trainer? Is that who he changed to? Uh, he trained with uh Adrian Broner's trainer, Mike Stafford. Mike Stafford was his okay. trainer. So okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the thing of of the of the whole gist of it is he wasn't getting a lot of fights, and the PBC, you know, they have a habit of you might fight once, maybe twice a year. On a PBC card, you know, some fighters and like their main fighters, they cool them off. And like you said, he has, he's lost like what two? He's got two losses now, so he might yeah, want to. Yeah, basically a two-step fight he lost. You know, so now he's like a way on the back burner. Yeah, so this might be the best thing for him because now he might can get fights. So now to stay active yeah. and be able to you know do some things that he wanted to do. And he was saying that he might be on that um, undercard of uh, Terrence Crawford and John Horn. Okay. So that, uh, Good for him. yeah, that Terrence Crawford uh, fight, he might be on the undercard of that. So that was pretty interesting. Now, this Errol Spence uh, Peterson fight, that's what I want to tell you about. Because I'm glad you did the show. I called. I was like, man, I don't know if they're going to do a show tonight. I left the movie theater just so I could make the call. I was watching a movie, but I've already seen the movie. So I said, well, I can walk out at this point. All the good stuff didn't happen. I don't want to miss this show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, let me go ahead and make a call. Yeah, and I was like, well, let me go ahead and give them a call. And I called the show, and I was like, man, uh, we was coming out. We got cut off because my car cuts people off if you don't hit the speaker. So I said, all right, well, let me get in there, get situated, and then oh, call yeah. back <laughs> and get back in the show. I don't want to call back. And they'd be like, you missed the show. I'd be, oh, no. Yeah, right? <laughs> there's, no, there's no 
more shows scheduled. You're like, what? Yeah. Is this over? What happened? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, Errol, I'm not worried about Errol, like, taking the fight lightly and all that. He's in, he's in a zone right now. He's peaking. He's, he's already ready to fight. Lamont Peterson, man, this is a guy who always got the short end of the stick all the time. He's He's been put in the biggest fights, but he never felt like the event was about him, ever. He never was like the A side. He was always that B side, that, that hard work, working guy, because he's he's a guy that, like, never could win that big one. You know, he, he was just good enough, but just couldn't get the nod or just couldn't win that big fight to where he could stand alone. But he's always good enough to where, like, wow, man, he could have won that fight. Or he might have done a great job in that fight. The only fight I've seen him dominated was the one where he got knocked out by Matisse, where he looked like he was completely weight-drained. Yeah, he did. He didn't look himself that Right. Other than that, every other time he's fought, he's looked like himself. And and he's always been durable. And can go all the way through. So, looking at the fight, I mean, stylistically, it's going to be one of those tough nights. But Arrow can control him from the outside. In the middle of the ring, Peterson will lose. If he allows Peterson to drive him to the ropes and be the aggressor and and all of those things, he can have a tough night on himself. But Arrow uses his size to his advantage. He stands tall. He don't give up his height. He keeps his distance. He set traps, and he's only going to punch when there's an opportunity to. And he will go after your body as well. Most people who fight Peterson, because Peterson throw body punches, they rarely go in with the body shots with Peterson, you know, because he's always elbows high, chin down, right. and comes right into your chest. But he, he closes off a lot of his own vision and smothers his work sometimes by getting a little too close. And when he does that, he ends up getting punished a little bit on the outside. Then he's not working. He's blocking a lot and taking a lot of getting in those type of wars all the time takes a physical toll on you so he has some time off you know to let his body heal um he might be uh you know ready for this one you know peterson might be game and might make it real interesting early but i think that uh errol just have more tricks in the bag where and then when there's an adjustment need to be made, I think that he's going to make it. And that um, Lamont Peterson's not going to be able to do anything more than what he's doing. And that's it. If you smother his attack of come forward, go to the body and work up top and stop his progression of work, then you can make an easy night of Peterson. You know, uh, Danny Garcia found that out the hard way. He was winning the fight and didn't close the door, and next thing you know, he let Peterson get hot, and hit, here comes Peterson roaring back in the fight because Danny was stuck doing the same things over and over. Peterson started getting warmed up and got a rhythm. Um, I see this fight going all the way to distance to the cards, and I see uh, Arrow winning and getting the decision. And I got it 12. Uh, I got it a unanimous decision for Errol Spence. I think the cleaner... Yeah, I've heard a lot of people saying he's going to knock him out. I'm like, well, I don't know, man. I mean, like you said, he's pretty damn durable. Oh, yeah, he's very durable. And the thing about him is he normally can take a great punch. You know, it's just when you weight drain and your chin is out, you know, you get caught on the button, that, that was just it. The Matisse hook, I'm like, that was he wasn't himself that night, and he didn't look himself. I didn't think he could bounce back or even be in contention. So we'll, we'll have to see. You know, he sold the fight with all his theatrics, you know, the very little that he did. Because, you know, he respects the guy. 
you know, Peterson and them, they went out, the place is selling. They respect each other. It's a very respectful fight. Right. Um, and like I said, if people like the fight, they're going to pay to see it. And people are like, well, no one was asking for that. Well, blame Keith Thurman or blame his wife. <laughs> I mean, the winner of this fight, I'm, if I got to see a fight, you give me Peterson and Spence, I'm not going to complain. Because at least I know I got a live dog either way. Peterson is going to go for the win. He's going to work hard like a workhorse. Once the fight get warmed up or he feels he's behind, he's going to start stepping up the pace, trying to push Arrow back. But Arrow's a big guy too. So we'll see. I think Errol's bigger than him, actually, but we'll see the uh, the actual fight process of it. And I don't think there'll be any knockdowns. No, I'll still say I don't think there'll be any knockdowns, but I do believe that uh, he might get Errol's attention. I think Peterson might get Errol's attention, uh, and with like an uppercut or something like that. I see uh, Peterson doing something to get his attention. You know, with Lamont, when he started, well, not as they started, but once he started getting on that Tim Bradley and, you know, those bigger fights, sometimes he just come forward. And at times, he'd be a little reckless. He would just dig to the body, but he would just go for it, you know? And I remember even when he'd come on this show and other shows, people would be like, hey, man, you got a good dad. Like, why don't you make some movement in there? And he's like, well, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to do that, and I don't. And then he did against Danny in that second half, too, where he, where he kind of mixed it. He mixed some aggression with also some movement. Yep. Now, do you see Peterson try to take this inside or maybe a combination of both? Because as we know, I mean, Spence does like to push the pace once he gets a little comfortable. Yeah, once he gets comfortable, yeah. And that's why Arrow's got to keep him out of comfort. So if Arrow gets him out of his comfort zone, fight's done. I'm not even worried about it. Once he get, If he keeps Arrow, if he keeps Lamont not driving and pushing him to the ropes, keeping him in the middle of the ring, I ain't got nothing to worry about. He's going to win that fight walking away because... The thing about it is Peterson don't throw counter shots. And he spent the majority of his time when he was training, they didn't have a speed bag. So when you don't have a speed bag in there, you're not really practicing on your the counter shots too much. And he doesn't know when to throw them. He tries to do it after he gets hit. The only way he knows how to punch is when he's leading off his offense. That's it. And when you see that happening and you don't, you're a fighter who don't know how to counter punch, you put yourself at such a disadvantage. And when he just, he just started to learn how to use a, a punching bag, I mean a speed bag just wasn't too long ago. Speed bag is good for getting your shoulders and reflexes, but it also is a good tool for counter punching. And Roy Jones was here last week. I want him not forget that. Roy Jones. He was here for a boxing event that they had. And um, what's that? Natex boxing program they got out. And, you know, all the sponsors came out for Roy. Because why wouldn't they? Right. So, yeah, he just celebrated a birthday. Him and B Hop. Yep. And Roy Back came out. Day, his birthday. And he says he's retired right now, but he will come out of retirement for one fight. And that one fight is Anderson Silva. I thought you were going to say B Hop. He wants 60 40. 60 40. 60 40. Remember that interview? They just keep going back and forth. Oh, yeah. 60 40. Hey, ain't nothing to talk about. <laughs> 60-40, and I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the fight oh, yeah, didn't take place when it was supposed to, and they trying to get this Anderson Silva fight, and he was like, we can do it right here in Chicago. These people here got the money. 
It's not a problem. Me and you could get this thing done right here. So that's the deal. They want to get Roy Jones and these promoters want to put it together. And they want to put Anderson Silva in the boxing ring against Roy Jones and still get this accomplished. This was a dream they set up. I remember like 10 years ago, that was the, that was the cross fight that everybody was, you know, that a lot of people were talking about. Yep. You know, we talked about the pain with McGregor, but good seven, 10 years ago, that was one of them. And, and you can tell Dana's like, I have no interest in putting Anderson Silver right now. Him or Roy, I don't care how old he is. We're not doing it. And, uh, but that was a fight that they were talking about. That, that, that was definitely getting a little bit of hype. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, that would be interesting. Roy would win, but, man, that would be interesting just to see it. Now, if Roy clip him on the chin, we already know where he's going. But then it was like, man, well, Anderson could clip him on the chin. And then they both going down. I'm like, well, that could happen, too. You think uh, Javier Fortuna is going to have any problem with, uh, or, I mean, it's going to cause a little problems for Easter Jr. Or Absolutely. I got interview him saying I got to fight Well, how do you see that fight breaking down? That fight is going to be amazing. Robert Easter Jr. is going to try to use his jab, but he, he's, got a, he's got a great left hook. But he telegraphs his punches a lot. He telegraphs that a right uppercut that he tries to... He, you know, he, he he don't know how to look you off. You know, like the quarterback throwing downfield, you got to look off that corner. You got to be able to set traps, throw feints, look them off. And the thing was, he fought a lot of uh, opponents when he was coming up that weren't as experienced. So when he was throwing all his punches at these guys, they all they knew was cover up or basically get hit. He didn't know how to really set up the shot. He's learned a little bit more as I watched him, but he still ha have these lingering flaws. And when guys you fight can actually take it, then you're stuck. You're stuck in a whole different type of situation. I'm thinking. Yeah, because sometimes he gets hit, he wants to get you right back. Yeah, I'm and thinking. Like, you you're going to. 12 rounds, dude. There's 12 rounds. You'll get him back. Exactly. If he just stays with the jab and fight tall, like I told him, I said, you're going to be the next Thomas Hearns. As long as you can keep making weight, you'll be the Thomas Hearns of this division. Easy. And he's like, I can make this weight easy. I'm like, all right. Wow. Yeah, he's like, I can make this weight here easy. I'm like, all right. But I told him, I'm like, dude, you could be the next Thomas Hearns at this weight because these guys are so small, they wouldn't be able to deal with you. Your height, if you work your jab, quit trying to set everything up for the hook and they, people could see it coming. You got to set it up. You got to fake, look them off, set a trap. You're just going in there punching. That's not, it's not real boxing. You know, you just, that's basic. Can't do that. But um, definitely Fortuna has an opportunity because he has very hard hands. Fortuna hits like a tank. And when he can throw the looping shot or he can throw it straight, yeah. right down the middle. Well, balance, yeah. Left field, and like, whoa, what was that? But he does it. He may swing and turn around, you know, and miss, but still land the shot. He's awkward as hell, man. Yeah, he's really awkward, and, and Robert Easter keeps his chin a little high, so there's a great opportunity for him to get clipped, yep. and he might go down in this fight, and he might get back up, you know, but I still think at the end of the day, Robert Easter's going to get his hand raised. It's going to be one of those... Uh, saying that they're going to fight April 21st. It's kind of weird. Jeff Warren signed the contract to fight Crawford. And Pacquiao, Bob Aram, kept telling everybody, same with Freddie, is all up in there. We don't even we don't even know for sure if he's coming back, right? <laughs> and then Jeff Warren signs the contract. 
They may can't fight it. They're just you know, trying to get that venue uh, marked down. They're going to have it on ESPN. And it's going to be, you know, it's it just it's just funny how all of a sudden, like, oh, by the way, Manny's on the card. And I think it's smart to have Manny on the card, don't get me wrong, but it's just kind of like, if they just not want him to fight Jeff again and, and stay hard again and just be like, you know what, you need to, because even if you felt like he won cleanly, it still was a rough fight. It wasn't easy. It wasn't a walk in the park, obviously. It was a rough and stumble. So why not get him back in there? Stay busy. Hopefully, it's not no Mike Alvarado, which doesn't sound like it is anymore. But I, I don't know. But you know, get him there, sit like Crawford, get at that forty-seven, get the belt, and then they want to do an ESPN pay-per-view in the fall. Is what this sounds like they're they're lining up because that Lomachenko stuff. I think it was just to bring up both of each other's name because the manager and the father have come out and said that's not happening now. Oh yeah. Well, definitely that could be the situation. I'm I'm thinking Manny Pacquiao. Looking at it, I think Pacquiao is he's so out of boxing right now, like spiritually, <laughs> like his fighting spirit is not even there. Yeah, I mean he's got the abilities. Like I'm just fighting for a check. Um, I don't think Manny is fighting uh, Lomachenko. Period. That's all, and it never was on. And I don't think he wants any more of dealing with that hard-hitting, tough guy. Look like he outweighed about 20, 30 pounds on fight night. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, geez. Really did. Much yeah, it was like a mugging. And I'm like, man, watching Pacquiao, that bloody in the ring, it was like a complete mugging. He was not going to go through that again. But he's at the mercy of whatever top rank want to do. And I still don't think he's going to fight on that card. Because Pacquiao really don't have worldwide appeal like that. I just think it would help to have any kind of name brand to help that Crawford Horn fight, being that you know that, that rating did so good with him and Pacquiao, and and then they could on the card be talking about well in the fall but we're fighting Pacquiao Crawford. You know what I mean? Right. But you're right as far as budget too. Now, if they're going to do a pay-per-view and ESPN is involved, now maybe ESPN said, hey, we'll put up a little more, more more money for Manny so we can get him here. We understand that Manny takes a little bit more money. I don't know. But, yeah, you're right. I'm not sold on that. I'm not one of them sold on that either. That's a good point that he'd be on that card because just financially it seems like, huh, I don't know. I'm not sure. It, it makes sense. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. It's just, just kind of weird how – Went from we don't even know if he's gonna fight again to yeah he's fighting April twenty first like what wait what what just happened mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't get it um anything else you got for him Cena? No, nah, that was pretty. No, nah, that was pretty much it for me. Yeah, I, I gotta get up in the morning, so I'm gonna get ready to lay it down, buddy. Hey, Thanks for having me on here. How about the